Ty, when you look at the film, you had time to deal with that today. What was the biggest takeaway that you can use for tomorrow? Uh, um, I would. I mean, I think the main thing, obviously, is we just turn the ball over a lot. Uh, if we can cut that down, get more shots on the rim, uh, it probably changes the trajectory of the game. Just some boneheaded plays for me down the stretch. So uh, I'll fix that tomorrow. How do you? fix that? Not just you, but the whole team fixing those uncharacteristic things. Yeah, I think just uh, settling in. Um, you know, I think a lot of our turnovers were unforced. Just our mistakes playing, uh, I don't want to say too fast, but I think just uh, like our decisions, we made quick decisions and that's what we've done successful all year and we're going to continue to do that. But I think uh, there was just some incidents where uh, just some miscommunications between guys and things like that. So we'll fix it. I know you're always such a positive guy, but also sometimes your own worst critic. How do you balance those two and try to put that heartbreaker behind you and move forward? Yeah, I think um, I was pissed yesterday. Um, very frustrated at myself just because I felt like, you know, I let that one get away. I um, feel like I was, you know, a big reason for that getting away from, from us as a group. But I think what I've learned in, you know, this playoff run is that you just got to move on. You know what I mean? The minute you start dwelling on things that have happened in the past, things can get bad. Um, and we understand. You know, we still have another game here. You know, we could go back home with, with the series tied, and we like our chances at home, you know, against anybody. So uh, it's just, you know, moving on and understanding that that's one game. And, uh, you know, you take the good with the good, the bad with the bad, and you move on. What is the key to finding success in your offense against their defense, especially with the pick and roll? You guys were able to get to the rim a lot. But it also looked like they were trying to give that up rather than some threes to you guys. Uh, yeah, I think just random movement. Um, you know, that's a elite defensive team, one of the best defensive teams in the league. Uh, they do a great job of switching and staying in front of the ball. Um, but teams that switch, the more random you play, the harder it is for, for you to you know, be guarded. So, I mean, we've had success offensively against everybody in the, in the NBA. Um, we're going to continue to do that. Uh, but we just got to keep playing random. I thought in the fourth down, I mean, fourth down, in the fourth <laughs> quarter, <laughs> my bad, fourth quarter, it probably slowed down a little bit too much, uh, not getting up and down. And, uh, we got to just continue to play with that pace uh, for 48 minutes, and uh, you know, good things usually happen. What's it like having a former teammate on the other side? I know Shea, I know he was saying leading up to the series, you and him were talking a lot coming into it. Did you talk to him during it? Would you just like having you know a teammate, a former teammate on the other side? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, obviously, people know me and O'Shea. It's like one of my best friends. Um, but yeah, usually we get dinner or something before we play, but we're not doing <laughs> that during this. Uh, and. I mean, yeah, there was just a lot of chit chat between us the whole year because I told him we were going to play in the Eastern Conference Finals all year, and he kind of laughed at me. So uh, here we are. But yeah, we don't really talk much uh, during during the games. We'll, I'm sure we'll have a lot of conversation after. When you talk about moving on, you guys have moved on from some losses throughout the playoff run. Um, just what have you liked about the way you guys have responded after a few blowouts or some games that you thought just slipped away from you like that? Well, I think that's what we do. I think that's part of who we are and our identity as a group. Um, we do a really good job of moving on. Um, you know, when things don't go don't go well, where we can get better is moving on when things do go well. Um, so, uh, you know, in this instance, obviously, I feel like that's one that got away from us and you lose and uh, I feel like we've done a good job at responding all year. Um, you know, even in that game, start down 12-0. Um, in the third quarter, they got up like 10. Uh, we, just re we just kept responding and uh, they know we're not going anywhere. So, um, you know, for just, we gotta, you know, continue to sustain uh, playing the right way for 48 minutes. By your time in the series, you're guarding an all-star, fringe all-star, whatever. How did you feel like you did defensively, personally in that game, and as a team, how do you feel like you guys did? Um, individually, I thought it was all right. Uh, there was some lapses uh, with, um, you know, with Drew in the post, or he had the back door cut when he was going for a screen. Um, but I felt like I battled. Uh, I felt like us as a group, uh, we just did a good job of showing our hands as much as we could um, and forcing tough shots. I mean, like you said, they got. <laughs> They're all all stars, you know. What I mean, that's a special, special group of guys. But um, as much as we can, we're just trying to force. Um, you know, they they get to you know ISO jumpers a lot, and trying to force them in the you know in the two point area as much as we can. But uh, and finish possessions. And I feel like um, last series has helped us, you know, be prepared for that because we you know we played the best rebounding team in the NBA. So as long as we can finish possessions, keep getting extra possessions offensively, uh, we'll be fine. Yeah. You talked about not dwelling, but you've obviously adjusted well game to game. Basically, any time you said, I'm going to get better tomorrow, you, you end up being better. But what, how, do you, how are you compartmentalizing to, so that you're taking, taking the lessons and not you know, making it, I guess, a problem for you mentally? What, what, what does that require to, to get both out of it? Yeah, I think um, just like I, I think film study, 
um, and not getting too high, not getting too low. I think that's that's really the biggest thing for me. Um, like I think throughout the course of a series, you're going to have good games, you're going to have bad games. Um, it helps that we're playing Jason, so Drew is here by default. So mm -hmm. I'm watching film with him, you know, literally every day. Uh, so that helps. But I think throughout this playoff run, I've had, you know, some I think you know some really good games, some of you know my worser games of the of the whole season, to be mm -hmm. honest. And um, I think just understand that that happens through the course of of, of this and. Um, Win, lose, good game, bad game, they're all lessons. Like, it's my first playoff run. Um, I'm learning a lot. And uh, I think yesterday was honestly, like, it sucks that it happened, but it's good for me. It's good mm -hmm. for me. It's something that, you know, it's kind of, it's really one of the first playoff games that I really feel like, man, I get up. You know, like, it's on, it's on me. So, uh, you know, it, it's good to learn. I'm 24. I got mm -hmm. a lot of time. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to win right now. So I'm just trying to learn it every day, learn from every game, and I feel like I'm going to do that. You mentioned the runs to start, like the start the game and throughout there. There was runs both ways. That's playoff basketball. But short of coach having to burn a timeout, what can you do to kind of manage that and keep that crowd from getting so raucous? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that for us, like, they they shoot so many threes. They make so many threes. Uh, you know, there's going to be a 6-0 run, a 9-0 run that's going to happen. Uh, but I think just still running on their makes is the mm -hmm. biggest thing, honestly. Like, when you start to slow down, uh, they'll, they'll, they're so elite, especially, you know, D. White and Drew at the point of attack when you're slowing down and they can angle you, send you where they want, they want you to go. Um, but the more you're flying up and down the floor, um, you know, I think it's human nature when you make shots to, you know, celebrate or kind of relax or whatever. So I think that they understand that, you know, make or miss, we're coming right back at them. And I think that that can kind of help uh, settle us in. Tell you made a point of you made a point of saying after Game Seven, you guys have the best best bench in the NBA. You talked about that all year, the, the importance of the depth. But obviously, you guys have <coughs> bench has had more minutes, more points, more attempts, more rebounds than anybody else in the playoffs by a pretty long shot. What's been beyond just the production you got out of those guys? I mean, how important has that been for what you know for starters in general? The fact that you guys have been able to stay fresh. I mean, what's been just the total cumulative effect of having a bench that you've relied on, which been really important to rely on in these playoffs? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been great. We got a lot of great dudes on our bench. Um, you know, we really, there's six or seven guys on our bench that can really, you know, help contribute, you know, if we we need be. And um, I think that's the great part about our team and the construction of our team is just that, you know, if our starters are playing well, uh, you know, and our bench isn't, that's okay. If our bench isn't playing well and our, and our start, or vice versa or whatever, um, I think that, that helps. But I think when we're both really clicking, uh, we're a really tough team to beat because I think that, we just got fresh guys in the game at all times. Um, and I think that that helps us play the way we want to play, which is, you know, to wear on teams for 48 minutes and it's a seven game series. You feel me? So it's not about one game. Like, yeah, like even in the New York game, I remember I got a question after that game one. Does it, is it disappointing that you, you know, you lost that game, you know, even though they're playing so many minutes? It's like, no, because it's not a one game thing. It's how can we wear on them throughout the course of a series? So, um, you know, I think it's just a kudos to our group. Uh, everybody staying prepared, staying ready, whatever need be. Um, there's lineup sometimes. We had lineup up there. So me, TJ, and Andrew, all of our point guards on the floor at the same time. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of different lineups. We have a lot of different ways to attack. We play small ball, you know, sometimes with Pascal and Obi in there at the five. Um, we play big sometimes with Pascal, Obi, and Miles. Mm -hmm. uh, we can just mix it up and throw different looks at teams, so it, it helps a lot. The yeah, All-NBA list, all all list comes out tonight. What would that mean to you to be included on that? Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, we know the financial benefit for me. And, uh, you know, I think it's just the you know, fruits of my labor. It would be cool to see that that appreciation shown in my game. But uh, we're here in the playoffs. And uh, honestly, if it happens, cool. If not, it is what it is. We move on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I just I want to win. I've said that all year. So here we are. Yeah, the, Celtics. Jeff, Jeff Eric, the, the Celtics are a team that really forces a lot of turnovers mm -hmm. defensively. It's all about staying solid, switching. How important is it for you guys to go deep into possessions? Not, I know I'm not saying like slow down, but to have that ability to, to work it for a whole possession. Yeah, I think it's important we get to like the second or third action. Because against anybody really, like I think what makes our offense so elite is we're not like a one action team. Like there's a lot of teams in the NBA who they run one action, they pull it out and they run the same action. You know what I mean? And I think what we do so well is we run an action, it's not there, we swing it through, get to, you know, a DHO or a blur screen and it comes back. And, you know, we run three or four actions. That's what makes us so, so tough to guard. 
Um, so I think the more that we can do that, the better. And like you said, like I don't think they don't force a lot of turn turnovers, but they do a great job of staying in front, showing bodies. Uh, but I do feel like a lot of our turnovers were more on us than them. And when you watch the film, I think that a lot of people would agree with that. Like we had a lot of boneheaded, just passes out of bounds. I dribbled off my foot like three times. Uh, just some things that we, we, we can correct and we will going into tomorrow. Tyrese, earlier in his coaching career, Rick called every offensive play mm -hmm. from the bench. He's given you a lot more freedom. But what is his offensive influence on you and the way you directed offense? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I think that when I got traded here, uh, just learning from him as much as I could because that was like, you know, kind of my first time of fully running everything. And we had play calls, but I didn't really know them. You know what I mean? Like I was kind of on the fly, like me and Buddy were just passing the ball to each other really. <laughs> uh, like that was kind of the way that things were, were going. But I think just like kind of learning from him in, in what I was doing was really helping. Uh, Mike Weiner as well, because he ran the offense when I first got here. So being with those guys and picking their brain all the time really helped me. Um, and just seeing like concepts and, and honestly, coming from playing with Luke, who was a great offensive mind too, just I loved what I always appreciate about Luke is he did a great job of putting wrinkles on his plays. And that was kind of like, I kind of became like obsessed with that detail that he, that he had. And then being here with Rick, like he does it, he kind of works the same way. Like we run the same set over and over, but we just might put a different wrinkle on it. So um, that's helped a lot. And then I think last year, just us having the whole year together, um, like halfway through the year, it was like he was never calling plays. And then to start, or that was really to start last year, he was like, I don't want to call plays. I want you guys to fully run everything. And right there, that gave me like the utmost confidence because it was like, if this guy trusts me to run an offense, then I mean, I, I know I can do it, you know? So um, it's really helped, you know, like being able to pick his mind all the time is like something that uh, I don't take for granted. It's, a, it's, a, it's truly a blessing to be around a guy like that. And um, yeah, I think that's, that just speaks to the success we're having offensively. Coach, after looking at the film, what was the number one message or thing you worked on with the guys today? Just really uh, encouraged with how hard we fought to get back into the game and, and to get a lead at the end. Um, you know, it was very unfortunate that we weren't able to close it out, but there's a difference between being disappointed and being dismayed. And uh, you know, we're disappointed, but not dismayed. And we've got to we've got to be ready to jump back into this thing tomorrow night. Miles said that those late turnovers were kind of this team showing its age a little bit. How do you coach them up for game two to make sure that those mistakes don't happen again? We looked at a lot of the problems that we had today. Um, a lot of these are adjustments that aren't complicated. They're just spacing, the recognition, and you know we've been a very good ball security team all year. So we've just got to we got to get that fixed. Um, and the things that we did well, we got to continue to do well. Rick, last night you acknowledged that you <coughs> some blame for the loss. We ask players often, you know, how they rebound from the loss when they're at fault. How do you rebound as a coach? Well, you, you take the circumstances that are presented. Um, and, you know, when you're in a leadership position, you got to see things as they are, not worse than they are. You got to see them better, and you got to try to make them better. And if it sounds familiar, that's a Tony Robbins quote, you know? Um, and so that's, that's the task. And look, Accountability, all that. My job is to keep pressure off of the players. I'll take the blame for any and everything. You know, that's part of my job. Um, I love this team. I love these guys. They have fought tooth and nail all year long. The things that they did to just qualify, you know, for one of the top six spots to avoid the play-in. You know, we had to we had to win high-pressure games down the stretch of the season, um, and and it was, uh, you know, it was. Uh, Looking back, you could look at it as a very daunting thing, but there was a great amount of growth. And, um, you know, we've, we've walked into three series as an underdog and, and, and on the road. And so, you know, you, you've just got to rally. Um, you got to take these challenges. You've got to rise above, you know, some of the challenges that happen, things that happen with, um, you know, officiating calls you don't agree with during a game, this, that, or the other, um, and keep, get, keep moving on to the next play. And look, we got down 12-0. Um, we're able to 
find our footing. Then we got down 13 in the third quarter and, and we're able to fight back and get a lead. And so those are positive things and, and we've got to keep up the fight. You mentioned officiating, but any chance did you send any clips to the league about I, that? I'm not going to talk about that. I mean, you could probably make a, some sort of a guess about that. Um, but I, I'm not going to air this stuff out publicly. You know, it's um, there, there, are, there are ways to address those things. And, you know, if needed, we will. You yeah. talked about taking responsibility. I guess when it came to the timeout and not deciding to call, was it just to make sure whoever was inbounding had that in their pocket? I talked about it last night. Sure. It's over with. We're moving on. Okay. You've been so good throughout the playoffs about let's not get too high about a win or too down about a low. How does that serve you in a situation like this when you come off a loss like that? Well, you know, we played – three games in five days. Two of them were elimination games. Um, one was game seven in Madison Square Garden. And so, you know, you go from the elation um, of that kind of a victory in a game seven to, you know, this kind of a disappointing loss. And, you know, these are, these are the highs and lows of, of the playoffs, especially when you get to the Eastern Conference Finals. And so we got to regulate all that stuff. Um, we got to see it for how it is, not worse than it is, as I just said. Um, and we got to we got to make things better, uh, make the things better that need to be better. And that's that's pretty much it. You talked about the run to start the game and several runs back and forth. I know that's part of the playoffs, but how can you manage, aside from calling a timeout, how can you try to manage those and, and kind of keep those as small as possible? Well, timeouts you have for a reason, um, and so that's one tool. And look, we've. We're 14 games into the playoffs now, and even our first-time playoff guys, you know, are <laughs> becoming pretty seasoned in a very, in a pretty short period of time. So, um, you know, we went through some really bad games. Game one in Milwaukee was a stinker. Game five in Milwaukee was awful. Game five in New York, New York was terrible. And so, you know, we've talked about the, the kinds of things that you got to do to move on, um, and, and and keep going and keep concentrating on the things you want to do and not think about the things that you, 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 know, you don't want to do and keep it as positive as possible. So, you know, this was tough. This was tough last night, no question about it. But um, we're excited to get back out there tomorrow. You got 36 for Tatum, and he got, kind of got going in overtime. And you talked about a hard there to match up with, but what did you think about how you guys did against him specifically last night? Well, th those guys are great players. I mean, you know, I mean, Tatum, Brown, Holiday, these guys are all, you know, I think they're all on the Olympic team. You know, it's just, you know, it's they're they're great players, and we've just got to do the best that we can to make it as hard on them as possible. And some of that is defensive stuff, and some of that is how we play offense. And so, um, you know, we talked about some of the adjustments that we need to make for the second game uh, today, and and um, you know, we'll 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 do the best we can to put those things to work tomorrow. Rick, one thing some of the players did mention is the fact that. The Celtics aren't really a turnover forcing team. They're just a solid defensive team. They try to stay as solid as possible or as long as possible. How important is going deep into the clock, being comfortable, going into multiple actions in this series? Well, we had 22 turnovers. 17 of the 22 were were when the clock, when the shot clock was an average of 15.1 seconds. So you know there were only five five possessions where the clock was was under 10. And so, as you mentioned, you know, with the clocks at 15, you know, we get, we get a chance to keep working the possession and keep trying to make it hard on them. We, we totally lost those opportunities. So, you know, um, I don't know the number of turnovers that were unforced. A lot of them were. And, and you know, that stuff is stuff that's fixable. Yeah, I mean, the three-point line is a big part of this series for sure. And um, what you just said, their feeling about defending us, you know, you, we would say something similar to them. You know, everybody wants to make it about, you know, taking difficult two-point shots instead of giving threes in the rim. And so, but it's hard. I mean, they've got a great team. I mean, these guys have dominated the league from start to finish this year. So, um, it's a it's a it's a really difficult task, um, but we're we're 
you know, we're looking forward to another shot at it tomorrow. Rick, you've been, uh, you know, you've admitted the sort of praise or just like acknowledge of the Celtics season and how good they've been uh, thinking last night and tonight, but also the guys all believe like we can hang with this team and go about it. How did you sort of go about that messaging to your team and say, hey, they're really good, but you guys are, are able to hang with it? Or just was that even a, a focus for you coming into this series? Well, we, we competed well against them this year, with the exception of the first game um, that was here, and we got blasted. You know, we got blasted. And so uh, the other four games, you know, we, we, we won a couple of them. They won a couple of them. Um, and so our guys, our guys know they can, they can compete with any team in the NBA, you know. Um, Boston is, just happens to be exceptionally better based upon their record and, you know, the, the statistical things that they've, that they've, you know, done this year and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we, we respect them. And, and we know that we're going to have to play at an extreme high level, you know, to, to, to win games in this series. In the first half, it, it looked like they got out in transition a couple times. And then also, as they were starting possessions, the coaching staff was trying to motion everyone up to get the pressure going. How do you feel like your guys' pressure improved defensively as the game went on? Well, it's, that's got to be a constant for us. Um, and, you know, we looked at some of that today and, and you know, uh, our thing is we, we've gotten to this point by fighting for every centimeter and millimeter of the court for 80, 48 minutes a game. I mean, that's, and that's how it's got to be. So um, going into game two, you know, we're just going to have to be more defiant about it and we're going to have to do better. Uh, Rick, last night uh, you had mentioned that uh, no one cares about 80s basketball or today's players. Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> You've been around uh, for a couple minutes now. What's allowed you to adapt to the modern player in the modern game so well? Well, I had a teenage daughter that just turned 20 a week and a half ago. And so, you know, I've learned a lot about this generation because you have to study it. Um, and look, I mean, I love today's game. Um, you know, a lot of the way our team plays right now is the way our team in 1986 played. You know, we were a, a team that trusted the pass and, and, and believed in each other and, and put the trust in, our, uh, in, in, in the players, you know, to create the shots. Um, the point guards, Dennis Johnson called all the plays back in those days. Tyrese Halliburton calls them all now. You know, and, and so, you know, there are things that translate, um, but I do know that the 80s was a long time ago, you know, and these, you know, the, these, these guys weren't around, you know, and so um, you can't assume that these guys have all studied all the matchups, you know, the, all the finals matchups of, you know, the mid 80s. And so, you know, that's just, that's just me paying homage to the fact that that's a reality. Hey, Rick, uh, I know um, a lot of times in situations like this, you might focus on the emotions of the players, but you've been in all types of different scenarios. So what have you learned about the differences in the playoffs about maybe having blowout losses like those game five compared to <coughs> last night and how you approach that in the 48 hours leading into the next game? Well, we've played 14 games now in the playoffs this year. Um, virtually every game has been different. Um, virtually every game, you know, from one to two, all the way through six against Milwaukee and through seven against New York, every game was somehow pretty significantly different. Um, emotions can get high and low, um, but the thing that, that we constantly talk to our guys about is, is, is keeping emotions as level as possible. We want to celebrate things, but, but we got to move on quickly to the next task. And so, um, you know, after a game like last night, um, you know, we're just really looking forward to getting back out there again and having another chance to compete. Rick, at the beginning of the season, you talked about an emotional conversation you had with TJ about perhaps his role being more limited than it had been before. How has his attitude and worth ethic served him from that conversation into what he's doing now? Well, it wasn't long after that he was right back in the mix. I mean, you know, and that was, that was going to happen. He's, he's done that everywhere he's been. Um, and so, but you know, this is, this is all part of the evolution of an NBA season, you know, in, as a coach, as you know, in a leadership position, you've got to be 
open to the fact that things are um, probably going to change. You got to be open-minded to everything, you know. Um, but then you got to make final decisions. And so, you know, I don't know what the exact point in time was, but it was pretty early in the season where it was pretty clear that TJ needed to be one of our one of our rotation guys. And you know, now he's established himself, you know, pretty firmly as a top seven or eight guy on our team, you know. And and so. Um, you know, our, our bench guys are like an extension of our starters, you know, and that's, you know, our depth has been one of the reasons that we've gotten here. We're going to cut it from the playoffs, but tonight they're announcing all NBA teams will <coughs> need to tie to be a part of that, both for him and for his, his finances. <laughs> well, listen, I, I, I have no doubt that he's going to be all NBA. I, I'd be surprised if he wasn't first or second team. So I don't even know why this should be a conversation in anybody's mind, but um, I expect him to be uh, all NBA, um, and I, you know, I, he absolutely deserves it. I had a question about uh, Tyrese as well, and I haven't seen him all year, but I know the second half he had the hamstring, and even that Milwaukee series he was questionable for a little bit. But it looked like to me that he was moving pretty well in the game uh, last night and in the end of New York series. Does it feel like he's gotten stronger as the playoffs has gone on, or how how would you sort of assess that? Like you said? He's doing well. He's doing well. and. You know, like I, I try to watch minutes as carefully as I can. You know, playoff games, you got to play guys, the amount of minutes you got to play guys. But we try to get our bench guys in the game early, get them involved, um, rotate guys in and out as, as needed. Um, Tyrese has done very well. And he had a, he had a back spasm issue earlier on. Um, and, and lately, you know, that's, that's resolved. He's doing, he's doing well. So today, uh, today, tomorrow is just recovery for tomorrow night. And so that's what, uh, that's what we're concentrating on. And uh, that's what he's concentrating on. But he's doing well. He does so much um, for the offense. And it's not all scoring. You know, he facilitates, does everything like that. How have you seen him work through his first long playoff run and work out when to be that aggressive scorer and when to get everyone else involved? Well, pretty clear to me he's doing pretty well with it you know I mean it's there are adjustments you got to make some nights it's not going to be about him getting a big scoring no, uh, number you know so but he he's developed a great feel for when when we need you know th that kind of aggression to score and when we need you know the the floor general the playmaker the play caller um, and the facilitator you know so um, in today's game you can't be an effective NBA player if you're not a threat to score from, you know, your spots on the floor. So he's always going to be a threat, and he's he's done a great job of striking the balance. It's important to move on from a win or a loss in the playoffs and get ready for the next one. Is it more difficult to move on from one like you had last night? Uh, not really. Uh, I feel like we've been in situations like this. Um, it's the third series of of this year that we've been in, so it's. I don't feel like games are won or a series is won in one game. Um, we just got to learn from it and correct our mistakes. What was the biggest sticking point you guys focused on in film today to fix for tomorrow? Um, just staying together. Uh, definitely got to limit our turnovers. We understand as a team, uh, one of the best offensive teams in the in in this league and. Uh, we're not known for many turnovers, but um, we we definitely gonna fix that for next game. When there's a run in the game, especially on the road, the coach can call timeout. There's only yeah. so many timeouts. How can you try to limit a run once they get on one? Um, just staying together. Uh, obviously, being in a hostile environment like like uh, TD Garden, um, we just gotta be together uh, through any situation. We understand basketball is a game of runs, and um, yeah, we stay together. We are gonna be good. You lost the game once in Milwaukee and New York, still won the series. How much does that give you guys confidence that it's not all doom and gloom, that there's mm -hmm. still a chance here? Yeah, it's, it's the first of four. Uh, like I said, um, series isn't, isn't one through one game. Um, I feel like both teams know that. Um, but yeah, we just, like I, like I said, we, we came in, watched film, and got better today. You guys were able to produce a lot of points off the bench. What went well for you in that second unit uh, going against theirs? Um, 
we just play our type of basketball. Uh, we understand what we got to do when we come into the into the game. Uh, TJ does a great job controlling the game, um, and we just play off of him. Uh, he he does a good job getting to the basket, finding open guys because he draws so much attention. And yeah, we just know our role. You guys have talked a lot about continuing to do your thing, you know, be yourselves. How much is it about that, and how much do you guys have to adjust to some of the things you saw in game one? Um, I mean, it's basketball. Like, we gotta fix all our all our mistakes. Oh, what's up, Ty? <laughs> 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 nah, we got uh, we gotta fix all our mistakes. But um, yeah, it's a it's a series. It's not it's not just one game. Um, and we're gonna learn from that one yesterday. Yeah, uh, what was what were the most encouraging things that you guys saw? And obviously you saw the mistakes and turnovers and yeah. the late game stuff, but obviously you rallied back from some of those runs. You know, right. Start 12-0, you were able to erase that. What stood out to you just as far as things that tell you, hey, man, we, we can compete in this series? Yeah, like you said, like they went on a really good run uh, to start the game, and uh, we just stayed together, um, came back, and fought to the end. Um, obviously, they're a really good team, and uh, we're a really good team. Uh, and first of four games we we came in today uh watched film and got better as a team and uh can't wait for this next game it felt like one of the better possessions you guys had last night was pascal finding you underneath kind of in the dunker um i think that's like a six or seven possession pass or yeah, yeah. pass possession yeah um how deep how important is it to go deep into the shot clock against a Celtics team without solid there defensively yeah, um, I just feel like the way we play uh, going deep in the shot clock, it just creates confusion. Um, we move the ball, uh, we screen, roll, um, and yeah, like we give up good shots or yeah, good shots for better shots. And that's what Pete did. Like he, he obviously is an elite scorer. Uh, he could have shot that elbow shot, but he seen that I was open past that ball. That's, that just shows what type of team we are. Um, try to get everybody involved, uh, want to see everybody be successful, and it's fun playing that way. So, When so much of your offense is fast-paced, trying to get the tempo going, how difficult yeah. is it to find that balance to be like, okay, well, we don't need to score in the first 10 seconds of this possession? I feel like it's a natural thing with us. Like, if we, if we have an open shot, um, we're going to take it early in the shot clock. But, like, we, we try to play until we have a really good shot. Um, and I feel like everybody understands that. Well, we th Rick talked about how tricky they can be to match up with. What to you stands out as what makes them so hard to guard at times? And how do you feel like you guys did defensively throughout the game last night? Um, I mean, I feel like we did a pretty good job. Uh, they're great players, uh, JT, JB. Um, like, they're professional scorers. They know how to put the ball in the hoop. We just, we just got to do what we got to do to contain them and uh, stop the other guys from doing what they're doing. Um, but yeah, like we, we just gotta stick to uh, our principles and what we've been doing the whole the whole year.